This is a video response to the user known as Feminist Frequency. She is a hardcore feminist. Take note of the word hardcore feminist. And I've been requested to make a video response to her videos for over the past year, in fact. Um, uh, I have a lot of people send me her videos wanting me to respond to her, but I've resisted in doing so simply because I think a lot of the positions she holds are crazy, and I just didn't really want to give her any of my attention or time. However, she recently started a, a video series called Damsels in Distress, where she's examining females in video games, and to summarize her 26 minute long video, she examines games from the eight, uh, 1980s and 1990s, and a little bit of more recent games, and she examines the male protagonist and the females in the video games, trying to argue somehow that women are an object sexualized objects in video games, and to an extent I can understand where she's coming from, and it's true, in some video games women are sexualized objects. I understand that, and I'm not disagreeing with that. However, her main argument is that women are made out to be an object and a damsel in distress where a woman is not the main protagonist of the game, and how video games are primarily all male protagonists, and she uses uh, Super Mario Brothers, for example. Princess Peach, always the person who's getting captured by Bowser. Mario always has to rescue her, and because he always has to rescue her, that somehow is degrading of women at the fact that Mario has to rescue Peach and rescue the damsel in distress, which somehow affects the female... There's not enough female role models in the gaming community. That was her main argument, um, and that... Um, the females that are portrayed in video games are done so very poorly and are done so in an objectified manner and she just doesn't think that video games should portray women as damsels in distress and that there are no good female role models in gaming. I'm here today to make one main point. There are plenty of female role models within gaming. In fact, most of my video today, Feminist Frequency, is going to be video game histories in which games that feature exclusively female protagonists, which you seem to think don't really exist. You make a big deal about females not being in video games, but you really didn't focus on the games in history that actually do have exclusively female protagonists. Some of my most favorite games include exclusively female main characters. I absolutely love the candy bar... Butterfingers. The only problem with eating Butterfingers that I've noticed is usually when you pull the candy out. Yep, look at that. It's already broken. Already broken. I need chocolate before I, before I go into. Um, I'll have one piece then. Mmm. One thing I hate about Butterfingers is that they break. But. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? So let's jump back to video games in the 1980s, shall we? So in 1981, we had the first female protagonist in a video game. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this was Ladybug. Also hitting the arcades, we had Mrs. Pac-Man. Also in 1981, where again, you are the female protagonist. In 1982, we had a game known as Kangaroo. This was a female protagonist in which you play as a female kangaroo searching for her lost baby. In 1984, we have The Girl's Garden in which you are another female protagonist. Although you have a boyfriend, you are playing as the main character bashing up bad guys. One year later in 1985, we get the first game to include a female ninja called Ninja Princess. Also in 1985, we have the female character Toby Chrissy Malrazu in the game known as Baraduke, another female protagonist. Another great game that I actually happened to play that came out in 1985 was Lady Master of Kung Fu, and this is actually a lot like Street Fighter, except you are a female Kung Fu master, female protagonist, beating up guys on the street. In the year 1986, we had another game known as The Return of Ishtar. This actually had two female protagonists known as Ki Ki and Gilgamesh. Also in 1986, we had the most beloved and one of my most favorite female protagonist characters of all time, Samus Iran for Metroid. The Wing of Medulla. 
another 1986 game that had another female protagonist known as Lucia. Very first 1987 game known as Fantasy Star, you play as Alice Landall, which is actually the first female RPG role-playing character that you get to play, who again, female protagonist. I could sit here all day and list game after game after game that exclusively has female protagonists, which you seem to think doesn't really exist, or if it does exist, female protagonists in video games are very rare. I'm here to tell you they're not, and I'm going to list you my personal list of games that I've actually played all the way through thoroughly of games that have female protagonists or female characters in which you can play, and the game is based upon that female character. Here's the games that I've played through. Gravity Rush, Fairy Bloom Freesia, Borderlands 2 Diablo 3, Offspring Fling, Final Fantasy 13, Amy, Dead Island, Loom, Portal 2, Portal, Dragon Age 2, Hydrophobia, one of my most favorite games, Beyond Good and Evil, Mirror's Edge, Heavy Rain, Bayonetta, Bayonetta 2, which is in the works, Dead Space Extraction, Wet, Velvet Assassin, Caroline the Game, Rosemary, Heavenly Swords 1 and 2, Bullet Witch, Perfect Dark, Perfect Dark Zero, Cameo Elements of Power, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, Blood Rain, Underworld Eternal War, Sword of Mana, Silent Hill 2 and 3, Eternal Dark Darkness, Sanity Sanity's Requiem, Dino Crisis, Golden Axe 1, 2, and 3. And I can sit here and list more upon more upon more games that I've personally played through that have female protagonists. But the main reason I'm making this video feminist frequency is to the kind of refute your idea that almost all video games have the idea of damsel in distress. And even if they do have the damsel in distress, so what? And to refute your comment re regarding Mario, and you know, Mario has to save Princess Peach, and she's always this uh, woman who can't be dependent uh, without having Mario around, I want you to take a look at Super Princess Peach, that's a game that came out for the Nintendo DS, in where the, the, the roles are com completely reversed. We have Princess Peach, the woman who you seem to think is being objectified by Mario and, and, and is being a terrible role model for women, Princess Peach saves Mario. It's a true game. Look it up. Super Princess Peach. It only came out a few years ago. Princess Peach saves the day and she saves Mario. So right there, if you had put a little more effort into your actual video behind the research of video games, you would realize that your points that you bring up about women always being damsels in distress is bullshit. Some of my most favorite video games include female protagonists. Look at Metroid Prime, for example, the whole Metroid Prime franchise. Much less, look at the new Tomb Raider game. The new Tomb Raider game is amazing, it's incredible. And you're a female character, and you're badass, and you kill people, and you kick ass, and you ki it's It's brutal! If you haven't played the new Tomb Raider game, Feminist Frequency, I suggest you do. But here's what I suspect is going to happen to my video. Feminist Frequency, if she does even watch this, um, or her feminazi hardcore feminist friends will watch my video. And I, keyword being hardcore, I'm not labeling all feminists the same, I, I realize they're different. But they're gonna watch my video and they're gonna say, Daniel, you're a sexist, misogynistic pig! Why? Because I'm showing opposition. I'm construct. I'm const I'm giving constructive criticism to feminist frequency about how her points that she's making about no, there's no female protagonists, or if there are, they're rarely rare, is bullshit. And I'm going to be labeled a bad guy, and I hate women, and I'm sexist, and I'm all these terrible things because I'm I'm criticizing a hardcore feminist. And what really irks me, and TJ did an amazing video, his video is linked down below, you can watch it too. It wasn't a long video, but he basically um, examined uh, Feminist Frequency for why she has comments and ratings disabled on almost all of her videos. 
with the exception of the video in where she's asking for donations for a Kickstarter program in which she raised $150,000. That's awesome that she raised $150,000, but really, Feminist Frequency, if you're going to raise that much money and then make a video series that your subscribers paid for, the least you can do is allow likes and comments to contribute to a discussion. But the fact that you don't, you're unwilling to allow likes or comments on your video displays the type of person you are. Now, Feminist Frequency's argument for why she doesn't allow likes and comments on her videos is because of... People threaten to rape me. People say tits or GTFO. And granted, I've had people threaten to rape me, and I'd like to give you a little example of something that I dealt with recently. For those of you who don't know, I actually had to go into a legal case recently because there was a man who I filed a complaint with with the local police near his house in California who was not only harassing me, but he made a page dedicated to harming my family. This page consisted of my address and every single one of my family members, including my three-year-old uh, nephew, in which had his photo and saying, break into Daniel Soulsbach's house, kill them, break their windows, and burn them down. I li this man was literally giving physical threats to me via a internet web page in which he dedicated to harming every single one of my family members. Um, it was on there, and I got it removed through law enforcement, and I contacted law enforcement, and I contacted my lawyer, and I had it removed. But even though he was threatening my life and threatening my family's safety, I didn't stop making videos, I didn't disable my comments, I didn't disable my likes, and Feminist Frequency, you need to understand how to use the, f the internet. If you're going to be on the internet, you have to expect criticism, and part of that criticism is dealing with trolls, and part of that is things like tits or GTFO, or get the fuck out. I don't agree with those type of things, but it's part of the internet. And if you're really that scared of being raped from people saying that they're going to rape you to get a reaction out of you, you don't know how to use the internet, and I suggest you stay off the internet. Because censoring the people that do support you is not only, I think, low, but it shows that you have no backbone. And I, as someone who's had a lot of harassment on my end, on my YouTube channel, that hasn't changed anything. All of my videos have comments, all, public, all likes. Even my most hated videos that have more dislikes, it's public. And I like it that way. And I suggest that if you're going to make videos in the future, that you allow discussion. Because if you don't, it just goes to show that you're really not here on YouTube for any uh, reason of of intellectual dialogue. Rather, you're just here to spew ignorant bullshit like you do in your video. My name is Mr. Repsy. I'm also Daniel Sulzbach. Thanks for watching. Peace the rep out.